I'm going live. Why? Why not? It seemed like the thing to do. It seems like it's a Thursday. There's no Ranger game going on tonight, so that's always good. We got Jay in the loot room. We got Greg from Sweden hanging out. We got Tommy for one tone. Me hanging out there. We got Mike Lee back from the world cruise dropping back in. You know, we got the whole, the, all the gang is here. Everyone, hello again. Hello, hello again. Can we suit up the ball machine or the game? Oh my God. What's going on here? Let's see what we got here already off the bat. For his sake, I say DJ, but personally, didn't believe it. Oh, we were talking about, um, talking about the, the, uh, the surprise people in camp, uh, um, James, James Williams, put it, uh, put it out there. I got to fix my hair a little bit. My hair looks terrible today. So that's why I'm wearing it. So James put it up to who was going to be the surprise player. Who's the guy we want to see in giant camp. Who do you want to see suit up? Uh, as, as you know, you know, just want to see, I just want to see do something, do that thing you do. And evidently, um, everyone's mine was Batman. Greg's coming in at the Joker. <laughs> Jay wants to know if we can suit up the ball machine on game day. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> let's let's see what else we got going on here. We got we got the first official mini camp, or excuse me, first official OTAs coming through um, in regards to having the full media, or the full complement of media in the uh, in the camp itself, which I found interesting because, like I said, we've talked about this before. It's a little strange that the Giants. I I've been in NFL camps. I've been in AFL camps. Um, and it's one of those things I've never seen the media not allowed in, in the situation, you know, it, never seen the media not allowed in the OTAs. Never seen it before. Never heard of that before. So I just find it interesting that the Giants seem to be trying to control the narrative uh, for the team, which is fine. It's their team. They can do whatever the they want to do. It's going to do what he want to do. It's my prerogative. But it, I just find it curious that they're only allowing the, the media to come in, the outside media to only come in for one day. It is what it is. Uh, what do we see? Kadarius, oh, we got motorcycles for 365. Started up and basically saying, Kadarius Tony starts off injured. Let's go. Let's go. Great start. He started off injured. I didn't, did Kadarius Tony get injured? I didn't know about this because I heard that everyone thought how wonderful Kadarius Tony was. Kadarius Tony's getting, yeah, getting, getting rave reviews. You know, we're hearing that he's in good health or, um, not practicing for unknown reasons. They, everyone five hours ago it says that everyone was healthy, and now I see three hours ago it says everyone is um is they weren't Ken, Kenny G and um Kadarius were not practicing due to unknown reasons. Could be anything. Maybe the shoes are wrong. <laughs> Maybe they don't fit. But we don't know. It's still early, guys, and I love it because people are like, I love this. People, people are like. Well, Mike Kafka said all these wonderful things about Daniel Jones. Said all these wonderful things about Kadarius Tony. What do you want him to come out and say? Do you want him to come out and say these guys suck? I can't work with them. I mean, seriously, what do you think that they are going to say about these guys? Of course, they're going to say how wonderful. I got to move my headset around. Cord was in the wrong spot. Of course, they're going to say wonderful, flattering things. I got to sit there day one and go. I can't work with these guys. They all suck. <laughs> hey, Matthew, what's going on here? My favorite time of the week. It's stream time at Tim's OBB house. The big blue house is all over here. Matthew, what's going on? Big shout out to the big family. What's going on here? Everything's going good. Everything's going wonderful. Red shirts on the injury report. Red shirts and on the injury report. I don't know. I'm, look I'm looking up the report right now. And it just says that uh, with two extensions, uh, wore red shirts and did not practice for undisclosed reasons. Sterling Shepard, it's undisclosed reasons. It could be anything. So to to the to the to the to the point of Mike Lee right off the bat, it's a hangnail. And we got our first two to super chat. Salute Tim dropping by the office to pay the proper respects for all the giant fans around the world slapping them stinky loser boys out the friggin' door. Forget about it. <sighs> Too bad the Eagles, the Eagles <sighs> got our old James Bradbury because that's the only stinky boys besides Dallas that I can think of. I hated, I hated that. I, I said he was going to go to the Eagles. I said it. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm beginning to think it was me. I'm beginning to think it was my fault that he went to the Eagles because I said he was going to end up with the Eagles. <laughs> they needed a corner. Howie Roseman always finds money. 
He got seven and a half million guaranteed with another two and a half in bonus money. Which then, it, which is gonna be difficult to get because he's got to he's got to be like an all pro and they got to make the Super Bowl. But he's playing against his team that basically dumped him after two seasons. Wouldn't you want to go to the division row? And I love the people that are like, well, I hate him now. He went to the enemy. How stupid is that? So we release him. <laughs> we release him. But we all, we give a caveat as fans to certain teams he can and cannot go to that will make us upset. God forbid he goes out and get the best contract available and finds work. But as fans, you can't go to Philadelphia, Washington, or the Eagles. Stupid is stupid does, Mr. Blue. Ah, uh, what's up? Tyrone is in the, his house. What's going on, Tyrone? What's up? Uh, Marcelo? Maybe they just want to play it safe. I would say they just want to play it safe with them. Honestly, that's what I think it is. Why would you even want to? Why would you even want these guys on the field for OTAs? OTAs are nothing. Wait till, wait till we get to mandatory minicamp in a couple weeks. Then I'll be more concerned if they don't participate in that. Them just being in the building is a win-win to me. What's up, Neil? What's up, Tim? You called it. It happened. Yeah, I know. I'm beginning to worry. <laughs> now, now my hashtag on Twitter is on my big blue prophecy. <laughs> See, Mike, Mike Lee said, Tim is always right. Let's, let's all namaste. Mm. I'm going to go back into a trance and I will tell you more news. What's up, Tom? How you doing, my friend? What do we got here? Uh, Matt, Kenny G's on the IR because he's got his feeling hurt because all right, he got his hurt. Right. Tony too. No, he's not on the IR. Nobody's on the IR. Right now, there is no IR. Nobody's 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 anywhere right now. Everyone's everyone's happy. This is a very this is a happy spot. This is a happy encouragement spot. Uh, well, this is a happy, happy, happy. What's up, Mr. Alvarez? I hope he shows out on the Eagles. He was the Giants' best player in defense the last two years. He was. He truly was. And I always get blasted because when somebody leaves the team, even Nino Brown Baker. I wish them well because you are a giant. You are a person. So I wish you well, no matter where you go. I'm not going to be happy if you pick six passes off in two games against Daniel Jones. I'm not going to be happy, but I think a lot of that's also going to be on Daniel Jones and not you. Kenny's not on the IR. <laughs> He's not on the IR. What does Jay have to say? Would love to see Kenny burn Bradbury for a 50 yard touchdown. I think we'd love to see Kenny burn anybody <laughs> for a 10 yard touchdown. I would think we, I would like, I, 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 I would be happy if Kenny Burns and a little person, an LP for a 50 yard touchdown because he hasn't scored yet. <laughs> I, mean, I tell you all the, all these people have to take, they have to take lessons from the OG QB, which is Tyrod Taylor. You got to take lessons, man. The dude is pimp. The dude is Walt Frazier. That's all I'm saying. Just, just, just go check out. Just go check out the Instagram. Which one of our receivers will score a touchdown? <laughs> I'm hoping all of them. The question should be, which one will score a touchdown first? My bet, if we have, if I'm a betting man, I'm saying who's going to score a touchdown, what wide receiver is going to score a touchdown first for the Giants, I am going to go Kenny G. I'm going Kenny G over the top, second quarter in Tennessee, left corner of the end zone. Namaste. Namaste. I put it out the vibes. The vibes are already out there. Mr. Oliver says, with the least surprise, surprising, they've already named Jones as a starter. Well, if they didn't name Jones as a starter, I think we would have a lot of trouble. If they didn't name Jones as a starter right now, I think we would all be shocked. I mean, but I think realism at one point in time is going to have to land on some people. Because, I, you know, again, it's the same thing with Mike Kafka saying, well, Daniel Jones, I'm impressed by his IQ. What do you want him to say? He's dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> like, what do you think they're going to say? And then people are like, see, the team's got confidence in him. What do you want him to say? <laughs> I just don't, I just don't get those people. Do you want him to say, you want him to say, well, I don't think he can do the job, but we're stuck with him anyways. Would that fill you with more confidence? Tyrod will be starting sometime this season. What does Tyrone have to say? A few guys are lifting mode. 
and don't want to run around. It's fine. Both KT and KG need weight room. Flot was in the weight room too. Yeah, y'all need weight room. That's what that's basically what OTAs are. You go in, you work out, you run around in pads, you run some drills, you run a couple 11 on 11s or 7 on 7s. Usually don't run 11 on 11. Usually, sometimes you run 11 on 11, but when you, a lot of times you run 7 on 7s. That's what it is. That's all it is. You learn the playbook, you meet the new guy, you meet the guys, you get everything, it's camaraderie. Jay says, has the tightening we drafted dropped a pass? Has the no, the tight end we have, <laughs> Bellinger has not dropped a pass yet. Nobody has. I love it though because they were talking about in the, he hasn't dropped a pass once. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, let's let that transition to the season. Let the kid, let these kids have a moment. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. I swear I saw people and I said it before. I saw people on Twitter like saying, we're going 18 and 0. It's like, I thought there was only seven days, but Kenny Burns, anyone for a touchdown? <laughs> I said, sunburns. Tennessee can get hot. Oh, uh, Jeff, what's up, Jeff? What are you doing, my friend? Uh, what do we got here? We got uh, we got uh, Tim Ordonis. Can you predict when we will get the best quarterback available next year? I will predict it right now for you. Um, namasteo, namasteo. We will get a quarterback in 2024. Just saying. Just saying. Same here. Whoops. What is what is what, what is Matthew you doing? Same here, brother. Just chilling and grilling. I was grilling earlier today. I had the big green egg fired up. We're going to have some nice weather in the next couple of days. I got a lot of things, a lot of time. Write it down, write it down. That's right, write it down. Second quarter, over the top, left corner of the end zone. Kenny G, first touchdown of the season for the Giants for a wide receiver. Book it. Uh, if, if it's like last session of the season, Sterling Shepard gets the first touch of the season on a blown cornerback. I'll listen, I'll take it any we can get. I will tell you, I liked the fact that the, this team right now is they're trying to, and, and it's interesting because if you do watch the press conference, I watch most of the press conferences, they're trying to preach a discipline. And it's not like what Joe Judge was doing. Joe Judge preached a discipline, but he didn't back up what he said. And that's why I thought he was full of shit from day one. He never backed up anything that he said. These guys seem to be under the understanding that there is a philosophy and there's an understanding, and they're all kind of on the same page about it, which is which I love, which is great, because that's what you want. You want to have a cohe you want to have a cohesiveness. But we have to wait. We have to just wait and see. It's way too early. <laughs> Jones is starting until he gets injured, which is inevitable. That should be the big question, and we'll ask that question right now. I don't know how to do a. Uh, I don't know how to do a poll. We'll ask that question. How many games do people think Daniel Jones is even going to start? I mean, how many games do you think he's going to play this season? Howdy, Mark. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hey, Mark, I missed you for a while. Howdy, Tim. I've been missing the live shows. I'm here tonight. Well, Mark, we haven't done a live show in a while. <laughs> so, you haven't missed much. I think the last time I, I did over a week ago, we did a live stream. When the weather gets nice, the bikes come out. The Harleys come out when the weather gets nice. Sorry. I got a ride. I got a ride. Saddle up. What's up, Vance? Much love and respect to everyone. Feeling you, Lance. Appreciate it, my brother. How you doing? Mike Lee is Mike Lee's back from his world tour. Brian and Mike were highly impressed with Daniel Jones' deer in the headlights during the two-minute trail. That's what they want people to say. <laughs> That's exactly that. Thank you, Mike Lee. You just summed it up for me. Is that what people want them to say? Daniel Jones totally sucks. <laughs> they're not gonna say it. They're gonna preach his, they're gonna praise him. They're gonna build him up. It's all a part of the new giant philosophy. And I've said this before. It has to do with controlling the narrative. And that's gonna be that's gonna be a big word coming around here. Controlling the narrative. Had Indian food for lunch. Yeah, I like Indian food. I actually do. I can't I can't remember any of the names of the Indian food that I like, but I do like Indian food. Uh, Matthew says, will Saquon be running the first running touchdown? That's the question. Yes. I think Saquon Barkley is going to get the first rushing touchdown. Tennessee, fourth quarter, two minutes left. Using my mystical powers. Uh, not 2023. Tim says we're drafting a quarterback next year, please. No, I don't know when we're drafting a quarterback. They got too many people with too many um, multiple first round picks. It's and I don't think we're going to be. I don't think we're going to be as good as people are saying, but I also don't think we're going to be as bad as people are predicting. 
And I think that's what we kind of have to look at. Mark says, we'll always get excited with change. I wonder how the atmosphere feels in comparison with the past three changes. McAdoo, Shermer, and Judge. You have to hope the atmosphere is better. Uh, Brian Dables handing out water. I remember what I hear, had to hear about Joe Shane's. I'm not Joe Shane. Joe Judge is rolling in the mud like a guy. <laughs> oh, dumbest shit I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Hey, Timothy, what's going on? It's going good. Motorcycle size 12. Tuto with the big Tim. What's up? What's up, Tuto? How you doing, my brother? Hope, to, hope the rugby guys are doing well. <laughs> One half. Hey, Fabian, what's up? One half. <laughs> One half of a game? Is that what you're saying? Just one half? <laughs> Derek Ramirez says uh, DJ will start most five games. Wow, a lot of people don't have a high confidence of how, how many games they think he's going to start. What's up, Lorenzo? He'll start 11, and then he'll get injured. Then we will snatch a quarterback next year. No, no, no. no. I'm already predicting two years down the road. Two, 2023, we're getting a quarterback. I'm calling it. Online Big Blue, the prophecy. I'm calling it. Uh, DJ's first touchdown pass will go. Uh, hopefully, it's a linebacker playing on offense. <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. Uh, uh, Jerry Ramirez says, uh, I'm excited for the. I, you know what? I like Corbin. I liked Corbin when he was in Florida State. I, I, I did not think he was not going to get drafted. I thought he was going to get drafted. I thought, I thought it might be later. I thought we might be looking at like a sixth or a seventh rounder for him. But I, I mean, he can return punts. He can return kicks. I think he's got a little bit of a wiggle. You got the wiggle, 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 the wiggle. So I, I think he's got a little bit of that uh, maneuverability. I, evidently, he's imp evidently he's impressing in OTAs. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what happens when we get into mandatory mini camps. What's up, OG knockout? We need to do the same thing Todd McShay did with Jared Goff. McShay saw that Goff couldn't get it done and got a quarterback that could. If Daniel Jones was with the Eagles, Giants fans would be calling him a trash. Yeah, they would. It was funny. I was talking to a um, I was talking to an Eagle content creator, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head now. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, he, he was bitching about Jalen Hurts. And I told him, I said, okay, I'll trade you straight up with Daniel Jones. His response was, God, no. <laughs> You won't even trade Daniel Jones for Jalen Hurts. That's how much you James Williams. Oh, and Big Tim. What's up, all my brothers? Anyone else I missed? My bad. Salute to everyone. It's been a week or two since it's been a week and a half, I think, since the last time we've done a stream. So I'm excited tonight. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna think I might just have myself a little drink. Let's get this part. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Man, shit. Oh, uh, what's up, Neil? Wait, nobody wants to see Andrew Thomas catch touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, I want to see him catch touchdowns. So, Brother James, what's up, everyone? We're, Lorenzo says, we're scheduled on league. Watch us ball out with Steelers style. Terrible teams and some close to the playoffs. I think it was actually, I think James Williams said it, and a couple of other people said it. that or No, Mike Lee also said that we are probably going to be good enough to be just not bad enough to get a high draft choice and then still have the antithesis of false hope. So you know, that's, 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 I kind of think that's the, um, I kind of think that's where we're going with that direction. Mike says, wow, Tim predicts we'll actually score in the first two minutes of a half. No, no, last two minutes, yeah, last two minutes. Oh yeah. Last two minutes. Half are a better than last year. I'm telling you guys, write it down, write it down. I'm prophesizing it. Write it down. Just write it down. Tuto says, no disrespect. DJ's a nice dude for all the profit charities. All he does with all the empty fields. Forget about it. He is a he is a nice dude, Tuto. He is a nice guy. He is a nice guy. I just keep thinking, though. I just keep thinking every time I see these things about how wonderful someone's doing. And I and I and again, I keep thinking of that old, you know, because you're doing an OTAs, you're not doing it in training camp, you're not doing it preseason, you're not doing it regularly, but they're doing it in OTAs. And I, and I keep thinking of that scene in Major League Two when Willie Mays Hayes decides he wants to be a power hitter. Willie's really got some power. Off a guy will be bagging groceries in a couple of weeks. And that's the thing. You're good. You're, some of these guys are playing off guys that are not going to be even be in the league. <laughs> so let's let's wait. At least wait till we get into the season. 
Uh, all is awesome, brother James. Thank you, brother Sir James. It's all, all much love. Everyone, we got everyone in the his house tonight. This is how we do it. Come on, this is how we do it. South Central does it like nobody does. Uh, what's up, everyone's everyone's saying hi to James. Matthew says, Who throws a first touchdown? Ty Ryder, Daniel Jones. I am gonna go Daniel Jones. I think for all the crap and the minutia that and all the issues that Daniel Jones has. He's our best hope to win. Now, the bull lightning didn't hit me. He's our best. He's our best hope to win. Because do you really want to? Th- what is Tyron Till like? Thirty four. You want a thirty four journeyman quarterback starting? Yeah, this is his fourth year, but we got to figure some shit out with him. We got to think something. Tim, what's uh, Timothy says? Tim, I think DJ will start all seventeen games next season. Wow, for what team? Hello. <laughs> uh, DJ is going to go AWOL in the London game. <laughs> Mazinga. Where's Dom? Dom is sleeping. Dom, let's see, it's five hours different. So that's one o'clock in the morning his time, I guess. So I think Dom's asleep. Everyone say, what's up? We got Brother James. We got everyone. Uh, saying, no, it wasn't Bird Gang 31. I'm talking to Bird Gang 31 in a while, but it was not bad. What is not the Bird Gang 31? What's up, Hirsch, for real? Because you know what? It's all real. It's all real. Who do we think starts at CB2? I think the question also should potentially be, who do we think starts at CB1? Do we have the confidence that Adoree Jackson can be healthy, not only through preseason, but from the majority of the season? That's going to be the bigger question. And you, you, are, you are bailing out with a bunch of rookies, and you're hoping a bunch of second-year players are going to have to step up. I mean, everyone likes, I mean, I think, I think, you know, you, you got to take a look at Robinson. You got to take a look at everybody else, but you got to look at Holmes. I mean, it's just, we are, we, we've signed what three new corners in the last 24 hours. And I've said it before. Someone said it before. It's like pasta. And when you're cooking pasta, if you ever taken a pasta, if you're an Italian, you cook pasta. First thing you're doing, you want to see it. If it's done, you throw on the wall, see if it sticks. And I think that's what the giants are doing with their defensive, with their defensive backs. The problem is we need to find someone that's going to stick to the wall and play consistently or trying to generate a pass rush with a bad secondary. is not going to be a, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. What's up Lorenzo with a big super chat. If we win four, seven games, we definitely need to trade ca- draft cap. And then early consensus is they have enough cap space to fill a roster needs. Plus get a rookie quarterback. The problem is, and it's not really a problem. You, you are 100% right. We are going to have more cap space next year. But the following year after that, which would be 2024, we are going to have a dump truck load of cap space. And now I think what I'm thinking about, I have to think about this with Shane, though, because some of the things he does make sense and some of the things he does does not make sense. He could have used the June 1st, post-June 1st designation on – uh, Logan Ryan, you are given two of those before actually June first that you can use that you could tag the people person with, and then you, you're you know that money comes off the books and everything else. But he didn't use that. He took the cap hit up front because he did not want to push three million dollars into of cap space into his 2023 cap allotment. So protecting in my mind right now, especially with Shane, if you take a look at it, what he's done, he's protecting as much cap space as humanly possible going over the next two years and hopefully build through the draft and then fortify with the cap space. I mean, I think that's what he's doing. I think because that's the only thing that would make sense of what we did with Logan Ryan. You could have saved what six million or whatever it was, and we saved seven hundred thousand. Where's Zach? Google that. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, I think th- from that perspective, that's what, we, that's kind of what we need to look at. Tuta, drop it on the other big super chat. At same London Stadium national rugby teams, we beat Wales in March. I was a defensive player of the D with 33 hard tackles and two and 33 disabled two players. Well, that's not good. <laughs> this shouldn't disable people. Did I ever tell you about the time I had 19 tackles in a game? <sighs> I think I've told that story about ad nauseum. I always forget about the part that I missed like 11 tackles, but you know, I had 19, <laughs> but Tuto's the man, 33 hard hits, hard tackles. I could never play rugby. I can never play rugby. I'd probably fall apart if I played rugby. Let's see. We got here. OG knockout says, I really think our defense is going to be the star of this year, especially the defensive line. If you look at it on paper, 
if you look at it on paper, yes, it should be the strength of the team. It should be the strength of the team, 100%. Because I still think you're going to have some question marks at linebacker, unless you're going to play uh, Thibodeau and you're going to take uh, you're going to take a Zio Gilari and, and you know put them in that outside linebacker position, which I think they're going to have to do. But they're going to kind of get killed in coverage. But I think that should be the strength of this team. That should be the 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 wherewithal for this team. What of James says, I remember what Chris Wallace says. Don't be mad. Ups. Don't be mad. Yes, is higher. Don't be mad. UPS is higher. I almost said ups. I laughed because someone uh, I was talking about someone and I call UPS ups because it pisses my mother. <laughs> This is my mom off. I call it. I don't know why it does, but it does. Uh, Mr. Alvarez says, "What is? Uh, what if it's a reverse tie rod? Jones gets hurt, and you know what's funny? You know, it becomes a Doug Flutie. It becomes a Doug Flutie back in Buffalo when they had Rob Johnson, who they gave all that money to rule over from Jacksonville, and they had the little quarterback that could, and Doug Flutie, little quarterback that could, and you know what? Johnson sucked it up. Flutie came in. Flutie flakes." playoffs and then they replace flutie going into the playoffs with rob johnson and they tank and then they bring flutie back next year so maybe it's a flutie rob johnson situation people are like damn tim you're old doug flutie reference rob johnson (laughs) got anything from this century uh what do we got here can we leave dj in england is it possible is it like home alone (sighs) too DJ will visit Poppycock. No, I'm going to say this right now. DJ is not allowed into Poppycockers with that haircut. You are a grown man. You have the haircut of an 11-year-old. I'm not picking on it, but you have the haircut of an 11-year-old. Go to a stylist. Go out with Tyrod Taylor, man. Go out with the OG QB and get yourself a real haircut. My son rocks a better do. Then Daniel Jones does. Tuto dropping into the other big super chat. Contrary to the NFL, we don't we don't wear any helmets, body pads, or diapers. We make a living by hurting people. Make them bleed all the extra bonus money every game. That's true, though, man. If you ever watch rugby, you go into the scrum. I know about rugby too. You throw the ball up in the air and you're killing people. I would go rugby, and they're not wearing any pads. I'm doing it in shorts. I used to hurt getting off. The, I was one of these guys that would wear everything because I always got hurt, but I wore everything you gave me. I think I wore elbow pads on top of my elbow pads. <laughs> oh, a rugby man, rugby's rugby's. That's just <laughs> rugby, man. That's, that's, that's just another sport. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. If it's 2024, it's the only dude out of Texas, I think, we're waiting for a quarterback. I'm joking. We're going to be fine, guys. We're going to be fine. Have a drink. Don't cost nothing. Unless you're in a bar. Oh, my God. Big shout out. Vance even says, big shout time. Big time shout out to the brother. Tuto. Drop it in that super chats. Wow. James says, why does the Giants front office keep saying DJ is smart and poised? Is that supposed to make us feel better? <laughs> would, it, would, it, would it make you feel better if we called them dumb and stupid? <laughs> but that's the thing. And this is what I'm talking about. James with a great point. This is what I'm talking about. People are like, he's excited. He's got the mic. This is what I'm talking about. The Giants new marketing perspective is control the narrative, control the the information and come up with these phrases. What was it before smart poise and everything else? It was the three big words the giants had. And now, now, now it's the same thing. And I love it because it, it's like politics. It doesn't matter what party you're part of. It's like politics because the fact that once you get a political narrative, it's like you try to latch onto it and keep using it repeatedly. So you think it means something that resonates with the people, but a lot of us are smart. Hurst says a bunch of stud quarterbacks in 2023. We don't have to wait till 2024. I said we were, we we're going to get one in 2024. That's what's going to happen. Hurst real. Get over it. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Neil says strip sack, fumble, scoop up for Kayvon, our first touchdown. All right. You know what? I think we should do that while we're here. And I can save these. And I know it's a long way away, but it's fun because we could also find out. Because it might be players not even on the team. Who do you think? This we're gonna do a contest. We're doing a contest. I don't know what the giveaway is, but we're doing a contest. What is the Giants' first touchdown of the season 
in Tennessee? What what's the play and who's the player? We're gonna keep answering the chats, but I also want to I also am curious to see about that. Matthew says, "Dang, Tuto, you are literally a wrecking machine, coming in like a wrecking ball." Yes, I know Miley Cyrus too. It's tough being this cool. It's cool being cool, Mo D though. Tommy for Tommy, what's up, Tommy for Tommy for one Tommy? I always think of Tommy Track. Uh, Hall has a good feel. Will be our, uh, our guard. Was well, guard Fox will be in heavy rotation. Flot is our number two. Uh, Evans, Belton, Corker, good rotational guys. Robinson has his per usual gets separation. I don't know any of that because we haven't we haven't even suited up yet. <laughs> we haven't suited up yet. Quick question, Tuto: Did you play in the sevens team or the fifteens team? Fifteen second team. What does that mean? Tuto, answer that question because I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, Robinson slant in the end zone. Okay, that's good. Uh, I like that one too. We are smart, but not like free. <laughs> Malik Willis scores the first touch. I already got my Malik Willis jersey on order. It will be here. I am going to Tennessee for the first game of the season. I'm going to Tennessee. I'm already looking at tickets. I am already ready. I did the, the, the on the board, the Malik Willis. Express. The Malik Willis Express is going to Tennessee. I will be there. Show the haircut. I'm not showing the haircut. My hair is terrible. I have my helmet on all day. My hair is like. Uh, Hirsch says, DJ and John Mayer have the same barber. Uh, I'm not showing your hair today because I was riding my bike and I had the I had the corner. I had the quarter helmet on. Uh, so my hair is all screwed up. I mean, my, literally my hair is all screwed up. Coming in like a wrecking ball. They don't score a touchdown at Tennessee. Well, that's not nice. <laughs> I think they should. What do we got here for the big two toes? Super chat. My father started me and my three brothers since we were six years old. Boxing, MMA, MMA. Just build us tough, mentally physical, not to learn how to defend ourselves, but how to be aggressive and finish. I've always told my son this, and I stand by this moniker, working in the streets of Philadelphia. South Street. Work in the door. There's no such thing as fighting dirty. <laughs> I always told myself that. There's no such thing as fighting dirty. You get a chance. You want to kick someone in the nuts? Go right for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> oh, no dirt in someone's eye. It's all good. You want to hit someone when they're not looking? I don't got a problem with that. Because <laughs> evidently, you've never been shot at in the streets in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's a long story. Uh, actually, it's a short story. Uh, we are smart, but we're unlike Fredo. <laughs> Slant with the red zone. Malik Willis, show the hair. First touchdown is going to be the first giant touchdown is Saquon Barkley on the TD. Oh, I like it. I'm not showing the hair. <laughs> uh, they don't score a touchdown. That sucks. First touchdown, Malik Willis against the Giants. Matthew says, Pasta reference number two. <laughs> Neil says, Giants minds think alike. <laughs> I love the pasta reference. I'm not even Italian. Uh, Saquon will break one first possession, Tyrone says, and they're going to be the first score of the game. I like it. I like it. Matthew says, probably not. That would be funny. I can only imagine the video Tim puts out after that. Uh, it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be good. Uh, what we, Oh, this is a good question. What week does Willis start? You know what's funny about Malik? I don't want to get into Malik Willis, but there are, there already, there's already rumblings from the fan base that they don't want Tannehill to start. They want Willis to start. <laughs> Uh oh, we gotta play it just one time because you know what? I miss doing the steaming Willie Beeman because maybe we can do it when Tyrod's in the house. Dance off, pop and lock. Uh oh, send it back. Oh my god, what does James have to say? Kenny's got no hands, Galladay. <laughs> Finally starts earning his money. Play action pass 20 yards out. I like, I like that. Our defense will stop Henry. Okay. What week does Willis start? I say week seven, Willis starts. Okay. Oh, oh, OG Knockout says, even if Daniel Jones does well this year, I don't think the GM and head coach want him anyways. If they keep them, they'll have two years to be successful and stay within the organization. I think you're right. I actually think you are very right and very astute on this point. I don't think, I don't think Dable or Shane really want Daniel Jones. Which is fine because he, he, they're not his quarterback. They're they are not. Dan Jones is not their quarterback. They did not pick them like they picked Josh Allen. 
they're not his guy. So you're not, you, you want to win with the, you want, you want to win the race with your horses and not someone's horse that you borrowed. So I kind of think, you know, I, I think that's, that's, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kenny, the sax player. Kenny G sax is better. <laughs> Kenny G has better. Kenny G, the sax players has better hands than Kenny G. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Jay, Jay got on here. Uh, Daniel Jones, quarterback sneak in the end zone. I like it. Jones, uh, Tommy for one, Tommy Jones had, uh, had better coaching and play calling. He would look like a completely different player coming into the season. The problem is I've said this before and I, I'm not going to go back and redo it, but I did a whole video on this with OGR sports and I actually broke it down statistically how Daniel Jones is 19 season, which is what everyone says is his best season was really not that great. And I broke it down statistically for because everyone loves stats. So I use stats to break it down statistically. So I don't think better coaching is going to help you process plays better. I don't think it's going to help you feel the rush. I don't think it's going to give you pocket awareness. I don't think it's going to teach you to climb the ladder. I don't think it's, I think Daniel Jones's biggest issue is he lacks football instincts. I've said this a million times. The only thing that stopped me from going pros was injuries and lack of talent. But one thing I had was football instincts. I knew where to be on the field. Didn't always have the talent to do what needed to be done, but I knew where to be on the field. I think Daniel Jones is the opposite. I think he has the talent to be on the field. I just think instinctively he doesn't know what to do. <sighs> it's tough being the king. Uh, I would say Dominic says Ricky seals Jones first touchdown. Hey, you never know <laughs> for a safety. Probably. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Kenny, you know, Kenny, uh, Kenny will have a good year. Robinson will be three and uh, three, or three, uh, will be three in receptions and yards. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't look at a guy that most of the league is calling a gimmick player and not a true wide receiver. And, being able to pontificate how he is going to progress when we haven't even seen him in training camp. We haven't seen him in full contact. I don't know. I know a lot of other people do. Um, Mike Lee says we will score a touchdown only to have a called back and settle for a field goal. Oh no, wait, flashback. And I think you might be right. <laughs> Jay sports car says Timido showing off at practice. I'd rather him show off in a game. They always have the expression, and I've always, I always liked this expression. Oh, uh, you know, we only got 29 likes. Come in the room, like the video. How hard is that? That's not difficult. You're adults. I don't have to tell you this. Um, but they always have the old expression, don't leave it out on the practice field. Same thing with baseball and spring training. Don't leave all your hits in Florida. Of course, if you're playing in Florida, then you may want to keep your hits there. But that's what they always say. So, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get overly hyped about anything or anyone until I see something that's worthwhile to pontificate about. Uh, the coaching, <clears throat> the coach isn't starting Willis unless injury. Well, the coach already came out and said he doesn't want Ryan Tannehill to to mentor Malik. He wants them to compete. That Mike Vrabel, <clears throat> one hell of a coach. That's all I'm going to say about that. Best one off the Belichick tree. What's up, Shane? Uh, Sean? <laughs> I'm always thinking, Shane, our front seven will definitely make our secondary look good. Don't be surprised if we're in the top 10. I will, on top 10 defense, I'll be shocked. I'll be 100% shocked because I said this a million times. I said this last year. If you have a great pass rush, it can disguise the deficiencies in your secondary. If you have a great secondary, it can disguise the deficiencies if you have a poor pass rush. But the problem is I don't think our pass rush is going to be where it needs to be right away because I think we are a collection of pieces. I don't think we're 100% a unit yet. And I, and I think that's, you know, I think we, and you know what Wink's going to do. No. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. You know, that's what the Winker's going to do. But I still think we are a collection of talent, not a team yet on defense. Write that down. That was, that was very, uh, that was very, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I thought Tannehill was finished after Miami. Tannehill's, you know, Tannehill's not a bad guy. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, but he just can't, he just can't get it done in the playoffs. Uh, 
That's what she said. Her surreal says, definitely think Shane wants his own handpicked quarterback. No one wants to inherit a quarterback. You don't want to inherit a quarterback. You're not wrong. You're 100% right. You don't want to inherit someone that's not your guy. You want to lose or win with your guy. Levant says, Kayvon Thibodeau sacks Ryan Tannehill, trips Tannehill of the football, scoops it up, scores on a 58-yard touch to the back of the end zone. Giants first touchdown of the year. I like that one. I like that one because that one's detailed. Uh, they're calling. Uh, Tommy says they are coaching up Jones to get rid of him. They're not going to get rid of him. He's not under contract next year. Why would you coach him up to get rid of him? He, you can't trade him. <laughs> so, oh, let's see. Matthew says to earn his contract, Ken, Kenny G needs 25 touchdowns this year. Is that possible? No, because I don't think he's got that many in his career. And most of his touchdowns came in one season. Um, he's not a touchdown machine. I never understood where this, 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 this idea that Kenny Galladay uh, was uh, again, it was a uh, was a touchdown machine. I never understood this. I never got it because he's got 21 career. What is he? How many touchdowns? He's got uh, 21 career touchdowns, right? And 11 of them came in one season. And the rest of the seasons are three, five, two, and zero. He's not a touchdown machine. He never has been outside of one year with Matthew Stafford in the dome. And most of those touchdowns came in the dome. We don't play in the dome, do we? Uh, are you worried about Tibbs fitting in? No, I'm not worried about fitting in words. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about anyone yet. I don't think there's a reason to worry about any. I mean, I really don't think there's a reason to worry about anyone yet. I think he'll fit in just fine. But like I said, I think right now, and and I think it's um, it's not by design. It's just the way it is because we have a dearth of talent. But like I said, I think we are a collection of talent. I don't think we're a team. Right now in defense, I think we're going to be. A, I think that's going to be what it is for a little bit. I think we're going to be a collection of talent, and then we're not a team yet. And then we will build into a cohesive team. Ah, uh, philosophy disorder. I like what Dable said about Jones needing to let it loose. They're going to give him a chance to make plays or not. The problem is we gave him chances to make plays or not. We gave him chances, and this go watch the three twelve and one podcast. Because I also I also broke down and dispelled the incorrect information that Daniel Jones did not have open wide receiver open wide receivers last year deep. I dispelled that rumor. I think it was from two episodes ago. I think I think that's I think that's what I think sometimes we get a little ahead of ourselves that we don't we 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 forget things like Darius Slayton wide open on numerous chain numerous occasions that we didn't throw him the ball. And DJ had time. DJ is book smart. Not he's book smart. He's like I said, he is um he's got he has the physical talent to be in the NFL. I just don't think he has what it takes between there. And I don't think he has the presence and the wherewithal on the field to do what needs to be done in reference to not the athletic ability, but the football acclimant. OG not get agrees with me 100 percent So you know it's a good day. Uh, the odds are Thibodeau has a sacked every quarterback in her division. <laughs> odds that um I say it's 20%. I'm going 20% on that. What's up, Jay? Sports cars. I know when to be at the supper table. <laughs> Oh, my God. Matthew says, Sherman was our quarterback coach. He's ranked 18th or so with his rookie. He regressed under judge. He's not going to be a top 15 quarterback all of a sudden. Let's be realistic. People need to be realistic, but you know what? I, I guess it's called being a fan. You don't, you don't need to be realistic. 35 likes. We're rocketing up the like chart. Seals, uh, we got another person. I got Tommy for one. Tommy Seals first touchdown to create separation of health. <laughs> uh, so, what is John? Say? Someone on Twitter just said DJ might, <laughs> might be Dick McCarr. How is DJ gonna be anywhere like Carr? He's more like Derek Carr. <laughs> I I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's false hope. And sometimes hope is not just false hope. It's just hope. I think that's what is, we're gonna have to go with. James says, Matthew, realistic. I love this. Have you talked to Giant fans? We're winning ten games. We're winning eighteen. Hit that like for the brother. Come on, hit hit it. Hit, hit, hit the likes, bros. Come on, hit the likes. Let's get up to fifty. Hey, Joe Rev, what's up, my friend? Jones has to have a couple of back-to-back -back MB seasons to keep his job highly unlikely. Jones has just needs to play well enough to keep his team in the game and avoid the big, stupid mistake that he always makes. 
and it's always a game changer. Like the fumble last year. <laughs> it's tackled from behind, has two hands on the ball, and he still fumbles. Uh, Hershey Real says, even the great Parcel, he, Parcel's 312 and one. The difference is the problem with Parcel's in 1983 with the 312 and one is he will tell you, and he told it, wrote in his autobiography, and he did it on the NFL network. He listened to, uh, he was, when, when Perkins left in 82 to take the job in Alabama, and they gave the, jo- they gave the job to basically an unknown in, in, in Bill Parcel's. Bill Parcel said he listened to everyone. But himself, he listened. He listened to people and started Scott Bruner, which was one of the reasons why we flailed. Then he went to Jeff Rutledge. Then he finally went to Sims, and then Sims broke his hel- broke his thumb on an Eagles helmet. I think he was seven for thirteen when that happened. Um, so the season was already over. And then he said, "You know what? They almost fired him at the end of '83." And he said to himself, "Parcells, is if I get another opportunity in '84 to do it, I'm doing it all my way." And the rest is history. Matthew says, "Amazing, somehow Jones is going to lock some potentially never. Yeah, he's going to be. He's going to be. Um, he's going to be Josh Allen. I think Vrabel is underrated. I don't think he's part of the. I was joking. I don't think he's part of the Belichick train because he never coached under Belichick. Uh, what does Tyrone have to say? Tyrone says, Tim, I've heard we're going eleven and six. I'm about to go deaf from hearing all the stupidity. Uh, <laughs> stupid is stupid does Miss Blue." Uh, that's all I can think. <laughs> uh, we might get torched with all the blitz. Stuff. That's the thing. We, we and this is what I'm talking about with the secondary. I don't think a Dory Jackson was ever a CB one in Tennessee. They didn't pick up his option. They let him go. He had the injuries. I don't think he was ever. He, he played well at times in, in Tennessee, but he was never a CB one. So we are now asking a CB two to turn around and fill in for James Bradbury, who, in my opinion, is still a top 15 corner, even though he lost the step a little bit last. He's still a top 15 guy. But so you're asking him to do that, and then you're asking someone like Flott or Robinson or someone else to come in and man the secondary position, this most important, one of the most important positions on the team is your CB2 position, and you're hoping that they move forward. And I, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope there. Uh, Let's see here. What do we got here from Matthew says, that's a great line, Tim. We are a collection Italian, not a team. You can steal it. You can steal it. What does he have to say here? Tommy Tommy says, flat our number two guy, McKinney Evans. uh, uh, Evans, Belton, Corker. So you're expecting three rookies. One of them undrafted. I think Corker is going to make the team by default. He can't cover. He couldn't cover what most of his plays in Kentucky. I did a breakdown of it. I, I can't remember which video it was. It was it was something. It was something like he had like seven hundred plays in the box, thirteen hundred in coverage. He can't cover. He's an in the box safety. He's peppers without any ability to cover, which is great because you could use a great in the box safety. You can always have an in the box safety if you have a freelance safety like McKinney. But I can't take three rookies, turn them into. It's one of those things. You can't take hamburger and make it filet mignon. It's not possible. Give the guys a break. Give the kids a break. Uh, let's see. KG is going to be a touchdown machine in producing hope and wishes and prayers. Uh, what's up, James? James, do we have any confidence that any of the undraft friends will actually make this team and have impact? The running back, maybe. I think Corker is going to make the team, but I think he's going to make a default because I've said it before. You've got Julian Love and you got Xavier McKinney. They're just sitting in the safety room doing this to each other. <laughs> That's all they're doing because there's no one else in the room. Uh, thank you. Levant says, thank you, sir. Tuto, much appreciation, brother. God bless you, man. You got to love Tuto, man. Where is Tuto? I love Tuto, my brother. Tim, uh, let's see. OG knock. I said, Tim, I'll say, I believe if we had a quarterback like Joe Burrows, we would have won the NFC East uh, two years ago. Remember the defense played good enough to get us in the playoffs two years ago. We just had bad coaching. Bad- I agree. If you had that first year under Joe Judge, you had a championship defense. Not a championship defense, but you had a playoff defense. You did. But you had you had a limited quarterback. And then you had a, you had a head coach that who just should not have been a head coach. Jones is not a winner, not in the NFL. He wasn't a winner in high school or college either. 
DJ had a chance, but he always checks down. He does, and I did a whole video about it. I did a whole 45 minutes about it with OGR Sports. I think it was two weeks ago. And I always use I always use the line from uh from Return of the Jedi from General Akbar. Admiral Akbar, I, 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 that's a trap. Because every time OGR would say something like that's where I right where you right where I wanted you to go. <laughs> so that's the way we were running. What does Ryan have to say here? Isn't it great that they're letting him be a playmaker? But the problem is he isn't a playmaker. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think that we 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 have I think we uh, we have seen enough the the fact that we know what he can and can't do, and we uh, we understand that he has his he has his issues. It's Daniel Jones at the five. It's Daniel Jones at. The- uh, never mind. Just saying. What's up, John? The receivers will draft from Kentucky played in the run first offense. Wandale Robinson, most people say he's a gimmick. He's a gimmick guy. He, he, he is a guy that you're going to use in different, you are going to create matchups and opportunities for him. He's a Tavon Austin. We talked about this without the speed. These guys sometimes, he, he's a Tariq Cohn without the speed. So sometimes if you could get him in the right matchup, you're probably going to excel somewhere for him or, or you're going to create something for him. But the problem is you got another guy named Kadarius Tony that you need to do the same thing for because he can't run routes. And everyone wants to talk about Tariq Kill. Kadarius Tony is not Tariq Hill. Tariq Hill was a terrible route runner coming out of college. Came out of like I don't know William Prairie Mary University. I can't remember what it was. He was a terrible route runner, but he returned punts. He returned kicks. The Giants coaching staff trusted Kadarius Tony so much, they did not allow him to return kicks or punts. I think they're they're already letting Juan Dale do it. They're already, and also Juan Dale Robinson evidently is a wonderful kid. That's what everything you read and hear about. He's a wonderful kid. And I think that's what, you know, so let's see what he does. Uh, Motorcycle 365 says, Dan Jones has scrambled eggs for brains. Maybe he's got an omelet for brains. I don't know. <laughs> Jay says, hope to see some progress from the start to the end. I, you know what? I said this before. If the Giants win four to six games and just show individual progression in regards to cultivating talent, I'm happy. I will go to every home game like I always do. I will stand on the field like I always do. I will sit there and cheer, and I will be there. But if it's another S show, like last year, I don't know. We gotta wait. We gotta wait and see. Uh, drink, <laughs> Jay Sports says, "Drink every time Daniel Jones says." Um, I did that, and that's why this bottle is almost empty. <laughs> uh, I think Corbin might make team as a team as running back. He's got a couple more uh, guys as well. I think a few will stick on the practice. I think a few will stick on the practice squad as well. I really do. I think I I just, I just have this feeling about Corbin. I I like Corbin. Is that big Don big Don with the super chat soup? Oh, a super sticker. Big Don of course was the number one cheerleader on the board for the Malik Willis Malik Express. Willis Express. I always miss you, big Don. I always miss you, man. I haven't been able to make some of the live, uh, some of the uh, premieres. I'm trying to, but I, 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 there's so much stuff going on. Uh, let's see. Goulash for supper tonight. Ooh, goulash for supper tonight. I, I like some goulash. Uh, let's see. Donovan said, let me get Daniel Jones. Uh, let hear me out. Okay. I didn't hear anything. Though. <laughs> well, here, Daniel Jones probably could be a decent, uh, a decent coach. Example, Kafka wasn't a good in the NFL. We don't know if Kafka's a good coach. <laughs> We don't know if Kafka is a good coach. He hasn't coached anyone outside of Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and you had Eric Bieniemy there as well. He's only been in the league for like four years. And before that, he was a graduate assistant. We don't know if he's a good coach yet. <laughs> we have a guy as an offensive coordinator that we don't even know if he could be a coordinator yet. But I think everyone is pretty much understand, understanding that uh, Brian Dable is going to run the show. I, I think it's going to be like a KC model. The KC model was uh, Eric Bieniemy spent the week installing the game plan, but the Walrus called the plays on the game day until about two years ago, and then it switched over to Bieniemy. I kind of think that's exactly what's going to happen again. Ooh, garlic toast. I like garlic toast. 
What's up, Mazinga? Tannehill had reached the ceiling with Miami his rookie year. What you see is what you get. Nothing more. That's per nothing more. The better talent Rowland, he is slightly better, but not much. That sums it up. Vance, what do you eat? You eating like a boss tonight? He is. Uh, what's James? I say, how do we have DJ even on book smarts when he can't count how many rushes are coming from the side? Let's come on, guys. We're stuck at 40 likes. We're stuck at 40. I'm stuck at 40. 40? I've been on an hour and I got 40. I'm going to sit here. I'm not saying shit. Take up to 43. You asked for this. Silence. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think it's because, uh, what is it? I think it's because they said car and got fixed in Oakland. <laughs> no, I love Oakland. <laughs> Even though they're in Vegas. Uh, yes, sir. Big time. Let's see. You're eating like a boss. Go ahead. Work it. Work it like a boss. Uh, thank you, Tuto. Everyone's thanking Tuto. Everyone's thanking James. Tom says the Titans never had a CB1. They just had a bunch of corners. Didn't they have a Dory Jackson? <laughs> Wouldn't he be the CB1? Tuto says New York Giants 11 to 6. Forget about it. Uh, I can't see 11 games. I can't. I, I mean, can't do you see us going oh and seven no i don't see us going oh and seven this year i have a feeling if you're looking at the first six games i think we're going two and four the first six games i don't think we're gonna go in seven but if we're gonna look at the first seven games <laughs> like i said two and four i can see us going three three wins four losses in the first seven games and then i can see the wheels falling off the bus with five out of the last seven being against divisional opponents and back to back against Washington. I can see the wheels falling off the bus big time. Uh, wheels will fall off the bus, go round and round. Uh, defensive backs brought in will do good because the opposing quarterbacks will have to get rid of the ball within four to five seconds at most. If you're give, if we're giving them four to five seconds, we're getting toasted. <laughs> Two and a half, three seconds in the pocket. Four to five seconds? <laughs> Great balls of fire. That's not good. You know, we're not playing well. We're giving if we're getting four to five seconds. Uh, big Tim and Dom almost absent for a while. Is he? Yeah, Dom is around. Dom Dom had to go back to actual work. Work. Dom had to go into the uh, like into the office. He has like a job, Mister Show. Uh, Tom says Joe Hayden or T Jimmy Smith. I think if anything, you bring in Jimmy Smith. I've talked about this before. He knows the wink system. He's been in the wink system for a while. Yeah. He's like 39,000 years old. It's amazing. Jimmy. I remember him back in Atlanta. <laughs> he's been in the league for like 11 years. I didn't know he's been in the league that long, but you don't need him to be a full-time starter. You need him to be maybe a spot starter. You need him to be a guy that can teach the young guys and teach people the system that wink wants to run. Hope the O-line starts to gel by week seven. It's a lot to ask. And, and, and I get concerned that people are building false hope because you're going to have, you're going to have a line where only one position from last year is solidified. You're going to have four new starters and one of them is going to be a rookie. And two of them are going to be free agents. And one Glowinski hasn't played a thousand snaps in two, three years. And then he's your big signing. So it, it's going to, it's, and you got Feliciano, who really hasn't played center coming into playing center. I mean, it, it could be, it could get ugly quick. And I think that, and I think it's, a, it's about what I've talked about before. Sometimes you are just, sometimes if you have ever been on a team, sometimes you are just a collection of talent. You're not a team. You are a collection of talent. The 86 Giants, the 86 Giants, they were a team. Their line was a team. You know, you, you had, you know, you know, you had Bart Oates sitting over there. You know, you had Ard and Benson and William Roberts and what's his name? Riesenberg. You had, you had a guys that they were called the suburban Knights. not the most, not outside of Bart Oates, who I think was a fantastic center came over from the Philadelphia slash Baltimore stars from the USFL in 84. He was probably the most talented person on that line because William Roberts was still was still young, but they were a collection. They were a unit. They were a team, and you need to build that. 
before you can actually play well. Sometimes a, co a cohesive unit can outplay talent. And I kind of hope that's what we need. That's what I kind of think we need to just kind of take a look at. Uh, first reel says we are lacking this corner spot. Maybe we can suit up Jason Stewart and Felipe Sparks. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's a possibility. I'm sorry. I'm going to be the guy that says, I hope DJ proves everyone wrong, plays well enough to get him tagged or a small extension. I'm going to be the outlier. No, you're not, Don. You're not. I keep saying this before, and I don't understand, and I don't understand how people don't get this. I hope Daniel Jones succeeds. Just because I point out issues and things that he does wrong does not mean I, we're at 50 likes. I said 60. I said 60. I didn't say 50. I said 60. Six zero. I don't imagine my wife's been with me for like 20 years. <laughs> People are like, oh, he's such an asshole. Uh, come on, guys, get those likes. But I, I hope he plays well. I hope he shuts me up. I really do. And I'm not bashing him because of the fact that I, I don't want him to succeed. I am just pointing things out that he does not well, which hurts his game. And that's what, that's all I'm pointing out. So like I said, you, you are not, you are not in the minority. You're not, you're not the, you're not the outlander. You're not the outlander. <laughs> Maybe you're the Highlander. Voted greatest movie ever by the Academy Awards. Uh, what do we got here? James, we're all giant fans. We all want DJ succeeds. However, the world is not made up. Hope streams. Wishes, shooting stars, four leaf floaters, prayers, and bubblegum. You forgot unicorns and leprechauns. Oh, James, always oh, dropping wisdom. Jones, he does tell me for once. He does, he does need to improve. For 72 people, 40 likes. We're up to 51 likes now. I'm just going to sing. I'm just going to sing, and then I'll just make everyone go crazy until I get up to 50, 60 likes. Uh, Mike Lee says, DJ is a bookmark. Ooh, I like that. DJ is a bookmark because he's being graded on a curve. Line of the night. I didn't screenshot that, Mike Lee. And I'm not moving it over to my photo file. <laughs> didn't screenshot that. And I probably will not give you credit for that tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, support the channel. Thank you, Mike George. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Three bullies lifestyle. Where is the shown sound clip when we? Where is the shown sound clip when we, when we win eight nine games? Low? There is a, there is a, there is a Shane sound effect. There is a Shane sound effect. It, the Shane sound effect is done. It has been perfected. I haven't decided yet when I want to release it, but there is a Shane. There is a Shane sound effect. The walrus man, my friend, does not like you. I don't like you either. Star Wars. We are wanted in five. Gig. We have one. I have the death sentences on five giga systems. <laughs> right, let's see here. What do we got here? Uh, what happened here? No, the Mets happened here. Oh, there was a uh, there was a, a proposed trade by the Mets. Scherzer's out. So we all know. We all know. Wow. <laughs> hey, Frank, what's up? Why don't Giants draft a freaking center for once? Someone tell me the last time the G-Men's drafted a center, please. Uh, they drafted a center once long, long time ago in the first round. I think it's like in the 60s. <laughs> I've probably seen it or that. Is it too J1? So is it too late to call DJ Sanders? You know, DJ, you know what Deion Sanders might be able to still play. He might be able to still be a CB one for all we know. What's up, Dominic? Uh, it would be nice if Shane Lemieux wins the left guard spot. He had chemistry with Thomas. I don't think he had tenant chemistry with Thomas. I've said this before. I think it was just Will Hernandez was not good. And I found it interesting that Thomas improved greatly every time that Hernandez was out. Um, I still think a lot of the issues that Nate Solder had, especially those first two years, were because of Will Hernandez. I said this. I pointed it out millions of times that sometimes sometimes your interior lineman blows an blows an assignment, and you have your left tackle looping out to cover you know to block a speed rusher, and then your left and then your left guard blows an assignment on the interior, and then a guy comes in through the interior for the sack, and then they blame the left tackle. 
said it before. <laughs> Mr. Mazinga says, all right, we're nine lights away. Let's keep it up. Come on, we're eight lights away now. What's that motorcycle? What about the vet corner we picked up from Baltimore and Philly? <laughs> They're garbage guys. They're pasta. <laughs> They're pasta. They're just getting as many guys as they can. Throwing up on the wall. See what sticks. That's all. That's all. Tom says, I don't, lol, I want to draft someone. 69 viewers watching, 51 likes. Please get the likes over 60. Much appreciated. Thank you. There goes White Chocolate with his 60 likes. White Chocolate's always here. Those that do not know, my new nickname is White Chocolate. I have been dubbed White Chocolate. You can all thanks, James Williams. Thanks, James. Mark, hey, Mark, what's going on? Barbados. I always like calling it Barbados, Mark. We got a lot of first-timers at key positions. Mistakes will be made. Yeah. Shane, Dable, Kafka, Tierney, Feliciano, center, corner, edge rusher, possibly new tight end, possibly rough tight Mark just summed up beautifully. James Wayne says, we're going into a battle with an unproven head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback, new rookies, and players from a bad team last year. Keep your expectations grounded and hope for the best. You're right. You're not wrong. James and I, right what, right back to back, back to back, back to back. Uh, likes are free. Are they free? <laughs> Hit the like button. Are they free? <laughs> Are they free? Uh, with the new offensive regime, how often will players be put in motion? Pre-snaps. Last year, we were among the lowest in pre-snap motion. Thank you for the content. Mike, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. And I'm going to tell you this, and people are going to be like, ooh. <laughs> Everyone gets hung up on pre-snap motion. Everyone does. And I'm going to tell something. I'm going to say something because you, you don't hear a lot of commentators or actually people that played to talk about pre-snap motion. You, you got a lot of people that don't really talk about that. Why? Because especially on the defensive end as a corner, you are trained to follow your man. You are trained to follow your assignment. If it's a zone pre-snap motion or not, a lot of times means nothing. Yes, you can catch the defense by surprise doing it, but if you know your assignment and you are coached well enough, look at the defense that Wink had. The first, not last year, but two, uh, two and three years after that, before that, look at the, look at what he had. He had quality corners and like the likes of Marcus Peters, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Smith. I can't remember the other kid off the top of my head. So pre that motion meant shit to that defense. They punched you in the mouth. And their corners knew their assignments. It's a crutch. It's a crutch and a term that people, I think, in some regards that don't know a lot about the sport. And I'm not saying you, but I'm just saying a lot of people who, who, who profess themselves to be experts use that term as a crutch and a reason why a team fails when there's so many other things. There's so many other dichotomies that you can break down about an organization and an offense that cause things to fail besides pre that motion. It's tough being me. Hurst Real say DJ is our Scott Bruner, a placeholder until we draft a franchise quarterback. Well, the problem is DJ, uh, the problem is he's not our Scott Bruner because uh, Phil Sims was on the roster and Phil Sims was drafted before Scott Bruner. Sims came in in 79. Uh, Weston Richburg. Oh, yeah, but we did draft Weston Richburg. I wonder where people think Jones will magically have an easy pocket and the most of the offensive line free agents rookie known for important blocking. You have to hope. But like I said, do I think it's going to be a co cohesive unit right away? No, because that, I mean, that's, that's just what it is. That's, that's just the way sports is. Uh, what does this person want from me? Well, leave me alone. I'm streaming. Leave me alone. <laughs> Stop texting me. You know who you are. Cause you're actually in the chat. Oh my God. Justin Witchburg. We drafted Witchburg. Uh, let's see here. Levance, oh, where did Levance go? Levance says the 86 football team starting off as a lineman, Brad Benson, Billy Ard, center Oates, Carl Nelson, and Chris Godfrey, Chris Godfrey, USFL, uh, Michigan Panthers. And then he went over to the Oakland invaders came over the same time that the Bart Oates came over. Carl Nelson had a couple good years. That was, that was, uh, Brad Benson's last year who actually he's having some issues right now medically. And uh, Billy Yard, Billy Yard was a good player. Billy Yard, I was like, let Ard be your guard. Um, camp bodies, yeah. With the Malik Willis Express. 
Uh, the first thing you should do when coming into a live channel, hit the button, support the effort and the content and the good content. Mike George gets it. Why doesn't everyone else get it? Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. What's up, Fabian? Uh, let's see here. That's what I said. We're not going to touch on the first game. Uh, Nikki, what's going on? Nikki, how you doing? Hola. Donde esta la baño, por favor? Me llamo Felipe. Que hora es? I took Spanish. There's no name for Tim in Spanish, so I, I had to go with Felipe. I didn't even get a chance to pick my own name. <laughs> they made me. They made me have a name. What are they still doing out here? Uh, hold on, I'm tracking my. Oh no, moving near Peach. I mean, I don't know where they are. <laughs> don't know my family is. Uh, zones will show on pre snaps or mans. Yeah, they will. But you know what the, the funny thing is? It's not defined by that because I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a hint. Tell me from one tell me and I learned this from a guy named Mike Tomlin when he was the defensive back coach uh with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2003. It's called shifting your assignments <laughs> for corners. They do that. It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god number of plays with man emotion pro football focus stat it should not be uh, thank you mike that it sums it up i'm going to tell you this right now being in nfl locker rooms and meeting rooms nobody said and this was back in the day yeah i'll say it but, but nobody was sitting there going we have to we have to run for more pre-stat motions that's gonna fool everybody oh my god he ran over there what am i supposed to do now Uh, DJ never changes the play at the line. Oh, wait, yes, he hands off to Saquon the two yards. He does not put Saquon in the best position. Avail. Uh, he does not put Saquon in the best position for him to make plays. We've talked about this. But, you know, he, he, he hopefully he's, he he's going to learn. Oh, you want to hear Welcome to the Party, pal? Welcome to the party, pal! I take requests. <laughs> oh, I didn't even click on that. I did it. I got to stop reading ahead of time. DJ is like the kid who gets stuck in the revolving door looking for it. Okay, that's just mean. That's funny as heck, but that's that's just mean. I don't think DJ is... And look at me now, I'm being the DJ defender. If you get up to... We're at 55 likes. If we get up to 60, I, I will defend Daniel Jones. I will wait a minute, and I will defend Daniel Jones. <laughs> He's not that bad. I'm going to defend Daniel Jones either way. No, I should wait till say. I wait. If we get up to 60, I'll defend Daniel Jones. I'll tell you why. What have we got here? Jay says Robinson returns behind his punch for the first touchdown of the year, 61 yards. You know what? Actually, that would be interesting. You know, and again, like I said, I think Wandale Robinson is going to return punts. I think there's things that you can do that, you know, that he can do and do well. I just don't think people need to have the thought process that he is going to be this guy that's going to line up on the outside and be this starting element. And you have a thing that you have Kadarius Tony, who you hope is going to be that starting. I see a flipper Anderson. Chill daddy. I see a flipper Anderson there. Crunch funch. Hit the like button. I still hate Flipper Anderson. I still remember Flipper Anderson running into the tunnel. Oh, no, you won't. I hit 60 likes. I'm going to defend Daniel Jones. 60 likes. I will defend Daniel Jones. Levance, 22 receptions, 25 yards, 260 yards, three touchdown passes, super so under feet. Phil Kim's going to go into Dizzy. I'm going first. Little known fact also, Phil Sims was the first MVP to utter the words, I'm going to Disney World. Little known media fact. Who's worse, Wentz or Jones? Jones. Mike says, ha, I can understand that. I think pre snaps motion could definitely help you identify if the defense is in zone or man, which anything to help Daniel Jones at this point. I, 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 I'm not saying there's not a value to it. But I'm just saying the fact that I have never sat in an NFL meeting room or an AFL meeting room. And people are like, you're not that old to be in the to work in the AFL. It's Arena Football League. <laughs> I love that the other day. Someone told me that. I love that. <clears throat> that was funny. They're like, you can't work in the AFL. You're not that old. Arena Football League. <laughs> 
not the old AFL in the 60s. I'm not that old. Uh, have you listened to Kadarius Tony's music? Yes, it sucks. <laughs> Sorry. I think he's a better wide receiver than he's ever going to be a rapper. 58 likes, man. I don't think we don't get to 60. I, I might turn off the show at 915 so I don't have to defend Daniel Jones. Mike Lee says, way to go with making sure you won't get 60 likes by saying you'll defend Daniel Jones. I will defend Daniel Jones for 60 likes. I'm whoring myself out. <laughs> Oh, my God. There's something seriously wrong with me. We're going to have to put O.J. Simpson's defense, defense team up for the grave to de defend him. <laughs> Is it, I think most of the people on his defense team, are. I think they all died. Didn't they, didn't they all pass away? Is that karma? <laughs> Is that what they call karma? But I think they all passed away. Knockout says, all smiley faces. Everyone's happy. I caught up to all the chats. I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> We're not up to 60 likes, man, and I can't defend Daniel Jones without 60 likes. I can't. <laughs> Jay says, I'm checking out reality and calling Jets Giants in the Super Bowl. That is what they would call the bizarro universe if the Giants and the Jets are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, I, you know it's sad, but if you actually think about it and you look at the, the Jets draft, if you want to be honest about it, is either going to go two ways. I mean, really, I don't think there's going to be any middle ground with this draft. The guys that the all the guys, the three guys they took are either going to be boom or bust players. I don't think there's I don't think there's anything other than that to say. But my question is, if they hit on all three, they're going to be they could be pretty scary. Uh, currently at my friends. Hey, Zach, you're currently at your friends. How are you doing? How are you doing, Zach and Zach's friend? Uh, Zach, if we hit 60 likes, I'm going to defend Daniel Jones. Uh, have you listened to Kadarius? I mean, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was my. <laughs> you know what someone told me the other day? And it's not like the first time I've ever heard this. They, 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 I've heard this a million times. They said to me, you don't always have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. They're like, you could pause and think a minute. You don't have to say, you don't always have to say the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> the problem is, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm one of those people that's like, did I just say that out loud? Uh, Tom says we need a Super Bowl for our number one. <laughs> we need some for our number one thing. <laughs> we're going to the Super Bowl, guys. Uh, we're, we're stuck at 59. We're stuck at 59 likes. Uh, what this exact says, so you do think Kayvon can manage to me and the media? I think Kayvon can. I think Kayvon is savvy enough to manage the New York media. But one of the things I do worry about with Kayvon is I see a little Bobby Bonilla in him. I see if I, I have this feeling that if shit goes south, that he could be very truculent with the media. And I do, I do get concerned about that. I think if things are going well, I think if things are going to go well, he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be the media darling. But as soon as things start going the wrong way, I think he is going to, I think he is going to basically, um, I'm not going to say implode, but I think he's basically then going to be one of these guys that at the end of the day, it, it's it's just not going to, it's just not going to work out. It's, it's just not going to work out, but I think he's going to be fine. I do think he's going to be fine. If the quarterback trips, then you must. <laughs> oh my God. It's the Wookiee defense. <laughs> Uh, Jay says, I will take our first rounders against just first rounders. And I'm not big on this. I'm not big on the sauce either. I've already told people I'm not big on the sauce. I think everyone knows I'm not. I, I think he's, he's too handsy. I think he's got a little Eli Apple in him. I get concerned about, uh, his, his ability and his size. But like I said, if they hit on all three, they, they there could be some people, um, there could be a team not called the Giants that are going to own the back covers of the New York Post and all the other papers. Uh, Michael, I uh, can't wait for Tony's interview. They're always gold. Tony does have a good. Tony does have a good interview. Tony really does have a good interview, doesn't he? He does have. He he is solid gold. He is the solid gold dancers. Uh, Eagles know how to. Eagles know how to bring in talent. Yeah, they do. You 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 can hate Howie. You can hate Howie Rosen all you want. You can hate him all you want. You can. You could say he's running the team into the ground with the capology and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, he does. He knows how to bring in talent. He knows how to work the cap. 
and he knows how to build a team. He knows how to rebuild a team on the fly. He really can. He could rebuild a team on the fly. He, during the rebuild, yeah, I, no way in hell. I thought they were gonna, I thought they were gonna be where they were at. What do we got here? Jets have built some depth on their team in free agency outside linebacker. Do you think we have a chance to make the playoffs? The Jets or the Giants? Because crazy as enough as this sounds, I actually think the Jets may have a better opportunity to, to make the playoffs. And that's in a and that's in a tough ass division. You know, you're you're sitting there with Miami, you're sitting there with Buffalo, and, and you're sitting there with New England. But I do think they have a chance. I think they have a shot if things break well and Zach Wilson can play. Uh, James Williams, I hate to say it, but I see a little cute OBJ and Kayvon. I hope he's a good sports system around him. Our coaches aren't scared to hold him accountable. I don't think he's an OBJ. I think Kayvon is, um, I don't know who I would compare him to. I think he's got, I don't think OBJ, OBJ when he was around, yeah, social media was around when OBJ was around, but I think, I think, People are now more fluent in social in social media. They understand it more. They know how certain people know how to work it. And I think that's what Kayvon's gonna do. I'm just worried, like I said, I just worry that that that, that the, the press will turn on him if all of a sudden he starts if he starts off extremely slow. And I and I think the New York media will hound you to death. Should we draft Dean in the second? I think we should have. I think we sh- I think we should have. I-, I think if you're gonna reach on Wandale, why not reach on Dean? Just my opinion. Uh let's see here. Which second year quarterback will break out? Second year quarterback? I don't know. <laughs> Man. Daniel Jones. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Captain Robert says, yeah, I was thinking about talking about the Jets. The Giants ain't winning that many games. Well, I think the Jets, if like I said, if they play to expectations, the talent that they brought in gels, Zach Wilson kind of figures it out a little bit more. I think the Jets could be dangerous. Like I said, I think they could own the back page of the New York Post. Or no, well, it used to be New York Post, New York Dales, you Dale News. Uh, you had a lot of you used to have a ton of newspapers in New York. Now I think there's only two. Hertz will hold the Eagles back. I said this before. I was talking to an Eagle fan, and I said to the Eagle fan, because he was bashing Jalen Hurts, I said, oh, I will trade you Daniel Jones for Jalen Hurts straight up. He said, no. He laughed at me. So I don't know. We'll see, John. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Any guess on how the wide, the wide receiver jet charts will end up? I feel like each one has a case to sit at the top of the chart. The problem is you have to worry about outside of like Wandale Robinson, you have to worry about everyone else in regards to injuries because everyone's been injured. And it's scary. You know, it's scary to say Daniel Jones, and he hope Bellinger is going to be the guy, but Daniel Jones does not have the safety net that he had in some ways with Evan Ingram, even though he stopped checking down him, but he doesn't have that tight end safety net right now, unless Bellinger is going to truly be the guy. You, you, you're paying Kenny G 72 million. You hope he's the guy. You hope he's the one that sits there and, and stands atop of everyone else. But like I said, he's got 21 touchdowns and since he's been in the league, and 10 of them came in one year in the Dome, and most of them came in the Dome with Matthew Stafford, a quarterback. So sometimes great quarterbacks make wide receivers' careers. Look at all the quarterbacks. Look at all the wide receivers that left Eli Manning and where their careers went. Wentz will be done in the season in week four. It's a possibility, but he, he played every played every game but what one or two in Indianapolis last year. You don't know. You don't know. Knowing our like Wentz will find that magic. Seems like a lot of Eagle fans bash. You know it's funny. Tons of Eagle fans bash Jalen. Tons of them. But then you say to them, you say, "Okay, I will trade you this for this. I will trade you this for that," and they always say no. <laughs> so. I just think Eagle fans are never going to be happy. They were bashing Jalen Hurts, uh, Jaylen, uh, not Jalen Hurts. They were bashing Carson Wentz at one point when he was having MVP season the year they won the Super Bowl. So you can't, you don't know. We can't, you never know. I, I just don't believe we can win the games with his arm. <clears throat> I, I th- yes, his arm strength is lacking. 
Is it is it a bat? Is it as bad as Fromm? No. Um, can he make all the NFL throws? And I don't think he can make all of them. No, especially not the deep ball. But my question is, John, if their wide receiver did not drop the ball on the one yard line, and we lost that game, are we still having this conversation? Let's see. Uh, let's see. I really like the Bellinger. To get Bellinger, he looks like Witten Light. I, I think so too, James. I think you're 100. Hey, JFan, what's up? Eagles would be better off playing Minshew over Hurts. I like the porn stash. I like por- uh, porn stash. Cousin Rico. Oh, excuse me, Uncle Rico. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Everyone, get ready to ride the tie rod train. Choo choo sound, please. Should we should we change it? Do a little bit of Quad City DJs. Come on, ride that tie rod. Ride that tie rod. Come on, ride that tie rod and ride it. We can do a little quad city DJs because it's calling the train. It's funny. There was a uh, there was a studio in Miami, and I actually was there when they did the hook for that song because they actually did the hook in a separate studio. A little fun fact. They also did part of the song in Orlando. Oh, come on. Okay. Anyone else think we're going to go to Nashville? I'm going to go. I'm there, Mike. I'll meet you there. Didn't know you were alive. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> oh, George George with the big super chat. Didn't know you lo- you live. You were alive. <laughs> You're alive. I didn't know I was alive either. Glad to see you are. Yeah, I'm alive. I believe I can fly. I'm doing good. Today. What's up, OGR? OGR, if you don't know, we did a the fourth episode of 312 and 1. It's actually excuse me, any place that you can find podcasts. Um, also, it will be on the Online Big Blue channel tomorrow after my regular scheduled video. Uh, so it's it's a fun show. We talk about giant conspiracy theories. I'm going to tell you this right now. Do not miss this show. Do not miss it for whatever you do. Whatever you do, do not miss the 312 and one, the podcast just for you guys. I'm, I'm going to watch. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go to podcast. Watch this. Cause I think you can hear it. I'm going to go. Uh, here we go. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to play. That coffee down. Look at that. You can hear the podcast when they launched. I think some astronauts were on a rocket. Wait a minute. Wait. Can- Okay, but wait, wait, no, let me read it okay. in town outside of like one or, or really any media outside of their in house. See, this media. is part of the show. It's but really Daniel good. Daniel Jones played, and at one point in time, I'm not going to spoil it, but at one point in time, OGR tries to convince me of something, which I think is so awesome. So you got to go listen to it. It's fun. Uh, show the arm that got the bees. Oh, yeah, you can't see them anymore. They they got, um, you can't see it anymore. Wait, I, gotta flick. I can't bend my wrists. <laughs> Don't get old and don't get uh, this. Also, where I get this, also, where I had wrist surgery right here. You can't see this other one right over here, but there was I had stings all down in here. Can't bend my wrist one way. <laughs> oh my god, it's terrible. And Tyrod, we got like Tyrod. I guess Hurts, I guess Hurts isn't. I don't think, yeah, I don't think Hurts is a franchise quarterback, but I think you can win with him. Uh, let's see. Yo, Minshew had a better rookie season than stats rookie year, and he's a backup. Make it sense. I can't make sense of that, Mr. Alvarez. I can't. I can't make any sense of that. So what do we say, Zach? So Tim, what do you think Wink, Wink brings to this game? Here's the thing I think about Wink, and I've said this a million times. I think Wink is going to bring his style. I think he's going to bring what he. I think he's going to bring what he normally does. I think he's going to be brash enough to think that he can will this team into into the type of defense that he wants to be. And I think he 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 is going to he is going to try to run his normal system, but I get concerned that without the players available to him to run that system, that he's gonna he may he may there might be some bad days. Uh, so John Daniel can't be the worst. No, no one can be worse than Joe Judge. <laughs> uh, Philly might have the best defense in the East. Maybe I think Philly. When you added James Bradbury and you put him out to big play slay. And, and and that other kid and the, the safety and, and then everyone else and then you got uh, Jordan Davis Philly could be tough 
Philly could be up. What's up, my brother? OGR says, James Wayne says, not much chilling. How about you? Winker is a weird name. I know. It's funny. I, I actually stopped calling the Winker, and people got bad at me. So I'm just going to keep calling them the Winker. Because I, I was thinking of Winker. I was thinking of something a little grosser than that. <laughs> it's the Winker. Uh, the Wink is the best defense coordinator in Spag. Not since, uh, yeah, it's been Spags. Um... I don't know. Spags had one really good season. Spags was like, you know, my person that we're not going to talk about because they went to Oakland. Um, I only went to Vegas. Um, he had one good year and really kind of, he had a good, he didn't have it. He really didn't have a good season that year. They won in Kansas city either. But if you want, I mean, I mean, I think the best even, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to say the best defensive coordinators from 2000, yeah, I could say, I would say that. I would say Spagnola is that. What's up, Petra? How you doing, my friend? I haven't seen you in a while. Chill Daddy says, two in the one pink. <laughs> oh, again, this is crazy. Good balls of fire. Jalen Hurts is no McNabb, but he made the playoffs in his first full year starting. The Eagles didn't play wait and see with Wentz for four years. Oh, I'm at 60 likes. I got to defend Daniel Jones. Okay, there we go. I defended Daniel Jones. OGR, chilling brother. Love his takes on the pod. Lol. The pod is great. Emmanuel, what's going on? Uh, we also have here is Judge calling plays for New England this year. I can't. No, he's not. I don't think he's calling plays this year. I don't think. I hope he does because then that would be better news for the Jets. Oh, Joe Judge. Let's all have a pizza party and drink Coors Light because we're 18 years old. I didn't drink Coors Light when I was 18. It was Old Milwaukee. Old Milwaukee because back in the late 80s, Old Milwaukee, you get like a case of Old Milwaukee for like $9.99. <laughs> have you ever had Old Milwaukee, the red label, not the blue label? Because the blue label, you are like bougie. Get the red label, that shit sucked. <laughs> Yeah, got the job done, but it was not what I would refer to as a, uh, uh, I would say it's not, it was not an elegant drink. <laughs> Milwaukee, no, not Milwaukee's best. Old Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee's best is pretty bad too. And you have Peels. That's pretty terrible. Yeah, I, I could go, I can go through tons of bad beer I drank. In college. Uh, what's up, Mike C, Tim? New to this. I well. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, Mr. C. Hope Mrs. C's doing well. Hope Joni's around and Chachi. Hope they're all having a good old time. Rule would have failed as well. I think Rule would have failed too. Rule is still failing. And he's still got Sam Darnold. I still think somehow Baker Mayfield ends up in Carolina. I still think they're going to. What does Petro have to say? What's up, Petro? Petro, Petro. Jets are going to be better than I think you're probably going to be right. And I see you're sad about it. Don't be sad. It's, it's you know what? It happens. I remember once the Jets were better than the Giants. I remember once. Was it 69? <laughs> Emmanuel says, we're talking about how we're looking at quarterbacks and defense backs in next year. Draft. Oh, yeah, we've already started that. We've already started that. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You're a late man. We started that a while ago. Judge is New England. He's the laps. <laughs> oh, he's the laps coordinator. I like that one. I love Mickey's. Mickey D's. I like Mickey D's. It's tree two rocky round two rocky to run. That's right on time. It's tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. Huh. I met this little girly. Her hair was kind of curly. Went to her house to bust her out. I had to leave real early. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Dales and the burgers are Ronald's. Sorry, hit the like button. Check out Tim and OGR's podcast. Where we'll go winless in the division. That's a possibility. Meister Brow. Oh, my God, Meister Brow. Judge will be in charge of calling timeouts. Red wine and blue wine. Black label, Meister Brow. Oh, my God, Meister Brow. Do they still make Low and Brow? Low and Brow was that big bougie. Low and Brow and Bex. Those were the bougie beers. You, you had money. You had Lowenbrower Bex. Yeah. You would, and it was terrible beer, but you would be like, ooh, <laughs> You're like, ooh. <laughs> he's drinking a Lowenbrow. I know the Jets are trying to get uh, K1 Alexander. Uh, if that can happen, they look like, I, I don't know, man. I think the Jets, 
I think the Jets, I don't want to keep saying it, but I do think the Jets can potentially have maybe. I'm trying to back we're trying to backtrack this because they could be if, if Zach Wilson puts it together, the Jets could be dangerous. The Utica Club. Oh my God. We're talking about all the bad beers. Her Joe Judge is a bouncer at a club. <laughs> Close enough. Mike says, I'm dead. The, I'm death. The silence is deafening Javenny Jones. Just lost it at my girlfriend's and had to say, What's so funny? Tell her, you know. <laughs> oh, my oh my God. But I defended him, didn't I? I think I went a whole 15 seconds without saying anything negative. So that's defending him. So counts. Is Zach Wilson a stiff? I don't know. You have to give time. will tell ice house. Oh my God. Ice house was my young. I remember ice house. Oh, that was another one. That, that was another one. If you had money, you'd be like, oh, let's go get some ice house. <laughs> Let's 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 go let's go get some let's go get some of that. <laughs> oh my god, ice ass, the bad beer days, man. I laugh because you know it's a lot of beers haven't gotten anything better. Idol special brew. Oh my god. There is there is some there is some there is some beers coming down the pike. Now, if you want to talk about regional beers, um, one of the worst regional beers comes out of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And they don't make it anymore. No, actually they do make it again now. But they didn't they 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 didn't make it for a bunch of Stegmeyers. One of the worst beers you could possibly drink. And uh you know I had a lot of family up in Scranton and Wilkes-Barre and that's where my parents were they lived around that area. So they had the Stegmeyers brewery and the building was like <laughs> you would think the building was abandoned. But they were still brewing beer out of the building. Oh my god, ice house. Pink champagne. Pink champagne. Z I'm, not, I'm not that bougie. Oh my god. Zima. <laughs> you had the Zima. Ice house. Ice house man. Ice natural. Ice natural. I didn't, I, know, I didn't drink a lot of ice natural. But I do remember ice natural. Zima. <laughs> no, Zima. Oh, Mike Lee, <laughs> come back from your world tour. You're talking about Zima. What's up, Frank? It's the sounds of Sinatra on the way you look tonight. Ballantine's Ale. Oh, my God. I don't remember if they still make Ballantine's Ale, Ballantine's Ale, but that was some, that was, that was crap. That was garbage. What just makes that little dolent? Think he can move that rubber tree plant. Everyone knows on that can't move a rubber tree plant, but he's got sing it for me, baby. High hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got high apple pie in the sky. Hopes. That's for you, Frankie. Uh, J Fed said, You guys need to come to Canada for beer, eh? I added the egg. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Canadian Molson. They still make Canadian Molson because that was that was some like that was like moonshine. <laughs> that would like that would be like ugh. Steel Reserve. Oh my god! You know what's funny? <clears throat> I believe Steel Reserve is out of Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. King Cobra. Ah, oh, we're we're dropping we're drop we're dropping some beers. <laughs> Giants, what? We got the beers. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. 20. Uh, oh my god. I cannot believe some of these beers. I, I can I cannot believe. Oh my god. A flashback series. And the Caps Canadian beer, which what, what is it? that Caps Canadian beer is not good. I don't think I've had Caps Canadian beers. MD twenty twenty, Mad Dog twenty twenty. <laughs> Bet you didn't know what I thought MD twenty twenty was, did you? You forgot what neighborhoods I lived in. Crazy Horse too. That's another one. Used to steal my parents' black label. Yuck. Yeah, but that's 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 like real. We're we're talking bad beers from college or bad beers from high school. 
because everyone knows you drank in high school. <laughs> you drank. I remember once coming home from a party. I think it was my junior year, high school. And I came home. I didn't have any shoes on or socks on. And, of course, my mom was waiting. Up. My mom goes, well, where are your shoes and socks? And I said, I threw them out the window. <laughs> threw them out the window of the car. And she goes, why? I said, because my feet were hot. And she goes, have you been drinking? <laughs> I threw my shoes, threw my shoes and socks out the window. I must have been doing something. <laughs> Crazy horse. Flashbacks are for real, man. Billy D. Williams, Colt 45. I love the book Colt 45 commercial. I was just talking to James Williams about the Colt 45 commercials. When he's going down the street, when he's going down that street, Keystone Light. Oh my God. But he's going down that street and he's got the dogs and the chains barking at him. He's got on the white coat and the fedora, man. He's just like, mm, the smoke is like, yeah. I'm Billy Dean. I'm cooler than the other side of the pillow. Uh, old English. <laughs> old English. West Coast. You don't drink beer. It's okay. You don't need to drink beer. Thunderbird. Uh, Keystone Light. Oh, that was another one. That was another good. That was, that was, but Keystone Light was like old Milwaukee. But the problem with Keystone Light was that was like the bougie old Milwaukee. Like, like I said before, old Milwaukee was like $8.99 a case. Keystone was like nine ninety nine a case. You had to have some money back then. Oh, Tom says back in the day for me was scotch and brandy. Uh, and is that Schaefer's? I do remember Schaefer's draft. I'm twenty. I never had alcohol. Well, John, you should not have alcohol. Alcohol is bad for you. Just keep watching the Giants and you're going to have to start drinking. Well, you're 20. You got another year. You got another year to go. I, I do not promote underage drinking on this channel. Oh, my God. Let's see. Bradbury's. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to fight Bradbury. Why? Why do you want to fight Bradbury so bad? Why? What did Bradbury do besides go to another team to continue his career because the Giants released him? Not going to set parameters for somebody because of the fact that they want someplace else to make money. <laughs> Moosehead. Oh, I like Moosehead. Oh, Moosehead. I haven't had Moosehead in years. Or Molson. Oh, Moosehead, though. Do they still make Moosehead? Moosehead was like my well, my last couple of years in college. Moosehead. Moosehead and Molson. But do they still make Moosehead? I think that's interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Celtics are blowing out the heat by 31 right now. Let's see. The Celtics will fall apart in the second half. What's the, what's the, um, what quarter are they in right now? G men for life says you'll get a second chance. You're going to two, two times this year. It's the principle. I don't fault anyone from going anywhere to make money. Mike Lee says Jenny beer tastes better out of the can than the keg. <laughs> I think all beer tastes better out of the keg than the can. Even old Milwaukee had a different taste in the keg. But then you'd have to put the $20 deposit down for the tap. I never got that $20 back. <sighs> Something always happens to the tap. Frankie Sinatra says, late to the game. What do you think about the Eagles? I love the Eagles acquisitions. I think the Eagles are the team to beat in the East. Evidently, Frankie, Frankie Sinatra hasn't been watching my videos. I think they're the guys to beat in the East. I think they're the team. I think it's going to be the I think it's going to be the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Washington team, and then the Giants. Now all that can change if Jalen Hurts throws up a Daniel Jones, throws up a stinker. I think all that I think all that's out the window and all that changes. But I, I think they um they 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 did what they needed to do, and they made you had Slay and the other kid I can't remember, but you had him, and um. You're adding James Bradbury to the mix. I mean, for seven and a half million with bonuses that he's got to be an all pro and they have to make Super Bowls for him to reach 10. So I think it's there. Uh, memories and how many headlines I've seen back <laughs> I've seen back in the day. Oh my god. John says I never smoked dope either. That's good. You shouldn't smoke dope either. Old grand old granddad. Oh my god, old granddad. You know what we used to do? We used to do what they... We, we didn't like doing funnels. We did shotguns. And the shotgun, of course, you take the beer and you and you, uh, you shake it up and then you pop it with you pop it with something. 
like a pin or something, and then you put it in your mouth and you drink it. And then, you, you know, the pressure built up pushes all the alcohol down. You throw it sort of like a phone. So we, they refer to it as shotguns. So what you would do then after you dig your shotgun, then right after that, it was as part of a drinking contest where you had like a rotation and going around, you would then turn around and have to take a shot. And um, I always remember because it would be always be the shot of Southern Comfort. And that was just... I the sun, you know, because you know, you reach a point sometimes where you just vomit so much. It's just like you know, you want to, you know, when you even say the word Southern Cover, your body just goes because <laughs> you remember it's the bad memory of having to do that. Who is Washington's number one quarterback right now? It's Carson Wentz. Let's see, it's about two minutes before the half. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did you just put us in? Yeah, I do put us in last in the NFC East right now. If you ask me this moment in time. Yes, we are going to be last in the NFC East. There is a potential that if things break certain ways, we could be swept in the division. Washington's going to be better. They're also going to be healthy. I think Dallas is going to improve. And you saw what Philadelphia did. So, yeah. But like I said, things can change. It's May. Molson family was owned by Montreal Canadiens. Molson Canadian is a type of beer. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I didn't know they were known by the Montreal Canadiens, like the hockey team. I didn't know that. Hey, what's going on? Uh, where, uh, where is this show going? Talking beer nonsense? Well, you got to talk beer now. You can't always talk Giants. Bush out of a keg. Ugh, Bush beer. That was bad. Shotguns. See, Fabi knows about shotguns. Shotguns, and then you have to do the, um, like I said, then you got to do your shot of Southern Comfort. Or I hated it, or you did, uh, you played quarters, and now they play beer pong. But quarters, of course, everyone knows you had the glass and you had the quarters table and you took the quarter and you bounced it in the glass and then you put it into somebody. You make them drink and then they take the quarter and do the same thing. And then you think about it, it was kind of really gross. Because back in my day, you're all drinking out of the same glass and there's a quarter in the glass. <laughs> I never really thought about how gross it was until right now. Things they let you do in high school. Uh, used to steal parents a Canadian mist and replace it with water. Of course, they yeah, they do catch on after a while. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yes, shotguns are our shots. Are either Wild Turkey or Captain Morgan. Ooh, that's a good one. Pip says, Slip Pike says, uh, five, I predict five to six. Actually, I've said it before. I predict five to six wins is also. Um, I think anything over that's going to be gravy. And I think anything over that or, or even at that level, we need to be happy. Blowing up my voice today. I did two podcasts today. Uh, losing my voice. Mike Lee says, three wise men, <laughs> JD, JV, and old granddad. Old granddad, man. Uh, we should lose for Bryce Young. <laughs> There's too many people that have multiple first round picks. We're not going to get Bryce Young unless we're like really bad. Anyone remember the cheap beer that came in a 36 pack of can for 15 bucks? So bad it came out of my memory. <laughs> yeah, I actually remember there was a 36 pack, but I don't remember what the beer was. I, I don't remember that. Frank Yes says the rebuild of the rebuild is rebuilding so tired. Canadian Molson is I like Canadian. I actually like Canadian Molson. Washington could be great, although it's po although it's possible Wentz is fit. I, I what you cannot fully blame Wentz for what happened in Jacksonville. You can't. I mean, a lot of it's also that the, the Jaguars stepped up, and a lot of it also was the fact that it was you know, the defense had issues, but you can't fully blame. But if you take a look at his stats, he was nine, what he was nine and he was nine and eight, 3,563 yards, 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions, completed 62% of his passes. I mean, you would take that for Daniel Jones in a heartbeat. Well, let me see here. Sources say that Daniel Judge is going to be one of the others to call offense plays for the Patriots. Good luck, Mac Jones, when, the, when it's a quarterback sneak. It is a quarterback sneak. We all know it is. Lucky here in New Orleans nine years ago. So tired, so tired of the Giants. Oh, my God. Crazy thing is our schedule is not a hard first class, but when you see the suspect teams that can't even guarantee over Windsor, maybe Houston or Detroit. You're right. Labatt's blue. Oh, my God. Labatt's blue. And and there and there used to be a uh, there used to be a chicken wing place, and and um, oh my God, Labatt's Blue just brought back memories in college because there was this chicken wing place, and you got your chicken wings and they had like nuclear and thermonuclear, 
wings and the thermonuclear wings they had made you sign a waiver after, before you got them but they would actually melt through the styrofoam <laughs> and then we would drink and i think one night it was labatt's balloon we were drinking uh crazy thing i already read that one uh pimps uh pimp next look back says all the daniel jones fanboys are going crazy about how this offense is going to be so amazing with dable uh don't get these people get tired of their delusional every year every time for daniel jones big calf uh, it's, uh, you know what you see the big calf talk again he's got big thighs he's got big calves let's make him a great quarterback Ah, uh, my friend, we know better. Do you think AG plays? De- I think he's got to play de- 72 million. He better play decent. He better play decent. He better be. Let's see here. Daniel Snyder purposely named the team commanders because he lost. Them. It's true. Uh, Bell Scotch, $5 a quart. Now we're in the Scotch. Giants Mount Rushmore. Do you have to have five on Mount Rushmore, right? Uh, that's a, t- you know what? That's actually a tough one because <clears throat> you're going to go, you're going to go LT hands down. You're going to go Frank Gifford. You have to hands down. And then the question is, are you going to go more in regards to hall of fame? Are you going to go Mel Heim? Are you going to go Rosie Brown? Are you going to go Sam Huff? Or are you going to go more modern and go more Eli Manning? I mean, it's, 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 that's, that's always, that's always a tough one. DJ can squat 500 pounds. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's great. If I have to have four on Mount Rushmore, I'm going to have to go. Well, you know, that's a tough one. I'm going to have, if I'm getting four, four on my Mount Rushmore, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Lawrence Taylor. I'm going to have to go Chuck and Charlie Conley. People aren't going to know who Chuck and Charlie is. Then you got to go Frank Gifford. And then you got to go with some, and then you want to go someone modern. You got to go someone like Eli Manning. That's all I got to say about that. All right, guys, my voice is crapping out. It, it's we're, we're nine minutes early, but we're going to end early tonight. Um, Cause I got a bunch of videos coming out tomorrow. And I need to say my voice for tomorrow. Cause I also got another podcast going on tomorrow. Carl Banks. I, Carl Banks is a Hall of Famer. I think Carl Banks is a Hall of Famer. Eli, uh, Eli Manning can't be Hall of Famer with a fight. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Joe Namath, how many, how many how much, uh, interceptions does he have in touchdowns? Yeah, you can. Easy. There's plenty of guys that had uh, that that were big time in playoffs that made the Hall of Fame. He's got two Super Bowl rings to prove it. And he's he's in the top 10 of all statistics. Uh, Mar- of course, the Marlboro man gets a shout out. That's Chuck and Charlie Conley. But guys, I'm going to check out early tonight. I appreciate everyone stopping and stopping by. We're only at 67 likes, but that's okay because you know what? I'm tired this evening. Fabian, you have yourself a good night. G man for life. Have you for a good night. Look, Frankie, chill daddy, Joe. Uh, excuse me, John. We got, uh, let's see, we got Mike Lee, of course. We got Petro. We got the pimp name slick back. James Williams, my brother, always in there. We got Mr. Olson. We got Tom. We got George. We got everyone coming. We got OGR Sports coming in. We're out of here, guys. I appreciate it. We will see you. We got a new video coming up tomorrow. Check it out. And also, you know, the 312 and 1 podcast also posted on there. Good night, Mr. Alvarez, as well. I appreciate you always dropping by and always being a big supporter. So, my friends, we are out this evening. Hope you had a great time. Hope you have some fun. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon.